Good morning. Oop, bring the mic around. There we go. There we go. Good morning. So I'm tired, but not as tired as the guys who played five overtimes in the Stanley Cup playoffs last night. So I was doing that among other things. <laughs> So that's something we haven't talked about. Y'all gotta tell me what you like to watch. Like we haven't talked enough about movies, television shows. I know a handful of you watch sports like crazy. I see you, Lisa, and your uh, <laughs> your infatuation with the Orioles, which I love, by the way. That was a crazy game with Philly last night. So we haven't talked enough about television. We're gonna have to do that at some point. But nevertheless. Excuse me. All right. Good morning. There we are. We hit double digits. Co host. Lots of host phase are out here. And when they beat the Phillies, that makes me feel better because, first of all, I did my undergrad in Philadelphia, so all the, so I've got a lot of Philly fans in my life. Um, but my favorite, my my best friend around here is a huge Phillies fan, and so he's just giving me grief here for the last what since like 2014 about how awful the O's are. So when the O's beat the Phillies, that's a good day for me. Not to mention, <laughs> not to mention 1983. And the O's beat the uh, beat the Phillies in the World Series, and that was the f uh, that was the first World Series that my in laws were married, and my uh, my father in laws from from this area, and my mother in laws from Philly. So I'm grateful their marriage lasted long enough that uh, that my wife um, <laughs> my wife happened after the O's beat the Phillies. Ah. All right. Well, let's dive into prayer this morning. It is a joy to have you. It is August the 12th. Uh, we are at commonprayer.net and page 397. And so, friends, wherever you are, whatever you are drinking in your hand, um, whenever you are gathering, be sure that we are grateful that you continue to be a part of this community of prayer. Um, and so thank you for joining us today. And so going to encourage you, um, if you are here, to leave a note and let us know. Let us know that uh, that you that you are here. Um, it is just such a joy to see names pop up throughout the day, uh, people commenting and letting letting uh, us all know that uh, that that you're a part of this process that is daily and almost uh, in so many ways hourly prayer. And so, so friends, I invite you to quiet your hearts, to breathe in some oxygen, breathe out some carbon dioxide, let your body just kind of wake up, let your muscles start to stretch back out. Just bring yourself into a place where you are present to God and to one another as we begin to pray. Let us pray. O oh Lord, let my soul rise up to meet you as the day rises to meet the sun. 
Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. And our collect for the week of August the 9th. Day by day, dear Lord, of these three things I pray, to see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, follow thee more nearly, day by day. Amen. And our antiphon for August 12th. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. And together we pray the words of Psalm 66, verses 1 through 4. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Sing the glory of his name. Sing the glory of his praise. Say to God, how awesome are your deeds. Because of your great strength, your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. Come now and see the works of God, how wonderful he is in his doing toward all people. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Our first reading this morning continues the story of David and Goliath. As we read 1 Samuel 17, chapter, thir- uh, chapter 17, Excuse me, verses 31 to 49. When the words that David spoke were heard, they repeated them before Saul, and he sent for him. David said to Saul, Let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight this Philistine. Saul said to David, You are not able to go against this Philistine and to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of a living God. David said, The Lord, who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go, and may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armor, and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag, in the pouch. His his, his sling (laughs) was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistines. The Philistines came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked on and saw David, he disdained him, for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you, might, that, you, that you come to me with sticks? 
and the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head, and I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and that that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. When David drew near to meet when the oh, excuse me, when the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on the forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. This is the word of the Lord. Our second reading for this morning is from Matthew chapter 27, verses 1 through 10. When morning came, all the chief priests and the elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. When Judas, his betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he repented and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders. He said, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. But they said, What is that to us? See to it yourself. Throwing down the pieces of silver in the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. But the chief priests, taking the pieces of silver, said, It is not lawful to put them into the treasury, since they are blood money. After conferring together, they used them to buy the potter's field as a place to bury foreigners. For this reason, that field has been called the field of blood to this day. Then was fulfilled what has been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the price of the one on whom a price had been set, on whom some of the people of Israel had set a price. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm so sorry. And they gave them for the potter's field, as the Lord commanded me. This is the word of the Lord. And our antiphon. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Our reflection today returns to uh, Dorothy Day, who we've read before, the co-founder of the Catholic Worker Movement, who said, Neither revolutions nor faith can be won without keen suffering. For me... Christ was not to be bought for 30 pieces of silver, but with my heart's blood. We buy not cheap in this market. Again, neither revolutions nor faith can be won without keen suffering. For me, Christ was not to be bought for 30 pieces of silver, but with my heart's blood. We buy not cheap in this market. So turning our thoughts to our friends, um, it was a busy day yesterday um, in terms of prayer requests. Um, and I think I caught, I'm pretty sure it was uh, Belinda who, as she was passing them on to me, said um, something about how 
as much as hard as it is to read each of these and to hear um, to hear and to sense the the concern that is behind every one of them um, just how beautiful a thing it is um, that we do indeed get requests just about every day that folks really are using it and that we really are praying um, it's just been it's been a remarkable thing um, and so um, even though sometimes I don't, I never want it to come out like we're griping about having more people to pray for. That's not it at all. Um, just want you to know that we feel the weight of these requests, but also the joy of being entrusted with these requests. And so, um, so today we continue our prayers um, for Abe Weller, um, who had, was scheduled to have a biopsy yesterday. That biopsy has been moved to today. Um, and so we certainly pray for Abe and for Wanda. Um, I was in touch with Wanda yesterday, you know, and it feels very much like a waiting game right now. Um, they are treating the blood clot in that artery, um, you know, but until this biopsy gets done, um, the way forward remains uh, sort of clouded. And so continue to pray for Abe um, and also Wanda as she um, cannot be with him and is awaiting um, news um, in, some, in some way, sh shape or form. Um, we are also today further just brokenhearted. Um, to hear the news of a, uh, a Taylor Barnes um, who took his own life, um, and there is there is nothing more to there is hardly anything that is more just heartbreaking than a beautiful, wonderful child of God um, deciding, um, being overwhelmed, and deciding that life life is not worth living. Um, and so, for Taylor's passing. Um, our hearts break for the family and for friends um, and for our community. Um, folks, we don't want to live in a community where people can no longer see any reason to live. And so this affects us all. Um, and so for Taylor, we pray. Um, and for Taylor's family, we pray as well. And then also was asked to pray for a uh, Steve uh, Moorhead, um, who is battling multiple myeloma, um, pneumonia, and is on a ventilator. Um, and so just the weight of his medical conditions um, certainly um, certainly is deserving and worthy of prayer. And so we lift up Steve today as well. And so friends, a heavy day for us. So let us take our burdens before our Lord as we pray. Father, you gave us two very basic commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And so, God, this time of prayer is nothing more than that. It is our best attempt to love you as a community of faith with as much of ourselves as we can, as much as ourselves as we can bring to this space. And so we pray the Psalms, and we hear the words, and we ask your blessing. Lord, we, we dial our focus in on you. And then, Lord, we do, we do our best to love our neighbors in this morning hour by lifting up our prayers. So, God, we would begin this morning by asking you to bless us as we attempt to do both those things. We would ask for your blessing, God. We would ask that you would always be giving us more attentive eyes and more careful listening ears and more discerning mouths as we engage in the work of prayer, praying the Psalms, praying our prayers. Lord, help us to see new things in your word. Help us to hear new ways that you are speaking to us. Help us to listen more carefully than we ever have. That we might discern your spirit moving in and amongst these words and helping them to seep down into our souls. And we also pray, God, as we bear this responsibility to pray for our neighbors, Lord, help us to do that better. Lord, for some of us, this idea of just praying every single day and naming names and all this sort of stuff, Lord, it, it, it feels like so much. And Lord, we know, Lord, that, that our hearts need to be opened, our minds opened. We need, we need to be more hospitable. We need to learn how to be more charitable, Lord, always, because that is how you love your people. And so help us, Lord, to do that. Help us to pray, not just with our words, but with our bodies and with our actions. And so, Lord, in both these ways, we pray that we would draw closer to you and that we would live more fully into the kingdom of God that you came to bring, have brought, and are yet still bringing. Loving you, following in your ways, and extending that love to each and every person that we come in contact with. 
And so God, on this day, we raise up a special prayer for our brother Abe Weller as he anticipates this biopsy on this tumor um, on his thyroid. And Lord, we would pray for good results or at least a simple diagnosis that can be, that can be easily treated. But Lord, we know there's so much going on here and we pray for this. We pray that as he has this biopsy today, that he continues to battle this blood clot. And perhaps most of all, as he is separated from Wanda, um, but we pray for Abe and for Wanda as they continue to walk this journey together and we lift up our prayers for them both. Lord, our hearts break and we mourn the passing of our brother Taylor Barnes, overcome by depression and anxiety, and finally took his own life, O oh Lord. And Father, it, there's, Lord, it's so hard to pray for because, Lord, his mind was so overcome by things beyond his control. And so, Lord, we simply ask for your compassion and for your mercy for Taylor, your compassion and your mercy for his family and friends, Lord. We pray, O oh God, that you would bless them and that you would surround them with peace in a time where peace must feel a million miles away. And we pray for us as a community that we would take issues of mental health and anxiety and depression ever more seriously. Or to treat them just like we treat any other wound. That we would care for people who are under these burdens just like we would care for anyone else. Lord, we pray that you would help us to be a community. Lord, where no one would ever feel their life is not worth living. So Lord, bless Taylor and bless his, bless his family. And finally, oh God, we pray for Steve Moorhead, Lord, as he also battles a multitude of medical conditions, as he faces multiple myeloma, as he's battling pneumonia and as now finds himself on a ventilator. And we simply ask that the doctors and nurses would treat him with the very best care and that you would restore him to health. Hear us, O oh God, as we also pray. Oh, excuse me, we did have other requests yesterday. I neglected to, I wrote them down. But Lord, we also pray for Amy Winstein, Lord, whose son Cody died in a car accident in Ohio, Lord. And we, Lord, we mourn that passing as well, this sudden and destructive loss of life. And we pray for Cody, that you would receive him into your arms and that you would be with Amy and the family, Lord, as they deal with their sudden and tragic and painful loss. And Lord, we also lift up a special intention, Lord, and we hold that near and dear to us, Lord. It does not need to be known to us in order for us to pray for us with passion and with concern. So we lift up this special intention this day. Also, God, we pray for Jade and Foley. We pray for Norma Boone and for Rick and Missy Clark, for baby Lacey and Carolyn Yost, for an unspoken request battling anxiety and depression, for Susan, for the Brett's family, for Jason and his family, for Hayden Studi, for Doug and Diane Hoffman, Lionel Snowden, Cart Denner, Drusilla Short, and for Garrett, for Karen Anderson, Amber Ash, Savannah Price, Bill Posey, Joe Zentgraf, Shirley Johnson, an unspoken request for Maddie, Doris Bortner, Sandy Suit, Marge Garrett, Alan Showalter, for Morgan, for Casey Finn, for Jeremy Dutterer, Riley Black, Dave Morschbacher, Jared Brown, Perry Lyons, Chelsea Sire, Judy Most, Ann Wilson, Dawn Penny, Scott Davis, Brian Cunningham, Tom Cross, Dave Cunningham, Carolyn Will, and for the family of Ronald Sheridan, and for the family of Trish Bradshaw. Hear us as we pray, O oh God, in our stuttering, stumbling words, Lord. Hear our hearts who yearn to see the world made right. As companions of Jesus, we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Loving God, your goodness is all around us, but sometimes it seems overshadowed by pain, death, and suffering. Assure us in times of doubt that you are the God of resurrection. May our lips sing your praise, and may our lives be a living sacrifice to you. Amen. And now may the peace of the Lord Christ go with you wherever he may send you. May he guide you through the wilderness, protect you through the storm. May he bring you home rejoicing at the wonders he has shown you. May he bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. Amen indeed, my friends. So allow me to offer my apologies. I'm a bit of a mess today. Um, and I apologize for those two other requests. Um, I usually write them down the morning that I come in. I leave all the emails up so I don't forget to, so I don't, I don't forget anything. Um, and then uh, had written those two other requests down yesterday afternoon, and so I'd forgotten that I had added them. So, um, so forgive me um, for being a bit of a bumbler today, um, but grateful um, that again we share this work. And so when we are weak, others are strong, um, and so that is why just the shared work is of such uh, it just brings me such joy. So thanks to each and every one of you for being here. Um, I pray God's blessings on your day. Um, I hope it's a beautiful one, and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning again. Peace and good, my friends.